guys, this is Veron from Secret of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a watercolor piece and it's going to be one of one of my friend's original characters and if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you might have seen him here and there. I've joined him a couple of times already. Uh, his name is Rain and yeah, he's like this character that's mostly mysterious and poker faced most of the time and I just wanted to draw him. So this drawing comes off like a fresh hot of the heels of Caldea Wild Summer Beat. Um, it's the video that I did before this. It was very, it was very fun. It was a very time-based project in the sense that it had to be done by a certain deadline. Uh, it was part of a fanzine for like a summer fanzine for Fate Grand Order. And I mentioned in that video as well. Because it had like deadlines and check-ins and stuff like that, like I had to have a schedule more or less for it. It really jump-started and just punched my creative gears back into functioning. And I went into a slight overdrive of sorts. Not really overdrive. I mean, once I finished like the drawing and the merch and everything else connected to that project, uh, I still had like this high and like drive to keep on creating or drawing or doing something. So like three days after I finished everything for that, I made this drawing. And this drawing is actually based off of a thumbnail. It's actually just a thumbnail, not even a sketch. Like a really small thumbnail I did like around last year. And when I saw it again, when I was flipping through my sketchbook, since the image was still pretty imprinted in my mind, I decided to do it. So you might have noticed that the sketch and the final line art was a little bit different. And that is because it is different. I actually scrapped the one that I had earlier and just redo, redo the piece because I wasn't liking how smushed it all looked. It's like it looked like the character was like too tall and thin and like the proportions were all off. And even like the background was weird, so I, I guess I was having some difficulty messing with or you know building the the basic sketch. So I scrapped that since I wasn't really contented with it. And I just redrew everything much better this time. And unfortunately, I didn't really have, I didn't really record that entire scrapping and redrawing process. So. And I'm just going to jump straight into coloring now. So the initial concept I had for this was actually something like a blue monotone kind of drawing. So I wasn't really planning on any using, I wasn't really planning on using any other color. Um, but since I really wanted to like push myself a little bit more and try to be a bit more, you know, creative, I guess, with this one, I decided to color it in. So. I have the skin color here, and I'll be building it from that. One thing I am doing though with this is I'm like putting a basic blue shadow on everything that I want to have like a shadow. So this is a technique that some artists use that when they're painting something, especially when they're outdoors and they're painting outside sketches. Uh, it's, it's just a technique, you don't have to do it, but essentially what you would paint first is the shadow area. So if you're painting like a tree with a brick building behind it, you will want to start with the bark of the tree and then paint the red brick wall or building behind it. And then you build from there. So you can do like the cream parts of the building and then like the leaves of the trees and so on and so forth. So it looks very integrated and like it doesn't look like the shadows are just on top of everything else so that's one way to go about it and i remembered that technique and i wanted to play around with it on this drawing another thing that i wanted to push a little more with this was the backgrounds so as you know i'm not very good at backgrounds or perspectives it's something i'm still working on and 
it always comes as an afterthought in my drawings quite often. So I wanted to make sure that the background was somewhat integral to this piece and it just won't be like this weird smoosh undefined ray of light kind of thing. So yes, I will acknowledge now that the background perspective is pretty wonky. It looks like the horizon was a little bit too high. So everything looks just too high in general. So I, I should have lowered um, the horizon a little bit so like the street and the buildings at the back would have been either longer or like just lower in general. The window is a little weird as well but that one I wasn't really sure what I was doing with it so eh. <laughs> But hey, it's, you know, sometimes this is how you learn. So what I'm doing right now is that I'm adding a just a general blue wash to the background since as I mentioned I wanted everything to have like this rainy just general blue atmosphere to it and since I wanted it to just be in the background I'm overlaying a blue wash and that will tie in everything more or less so it will serve as the base for everything else. So one thing I was scared of in the background is that it might steal away the focus from the foreground or the character. And usually you can fix that easily in digital art by just like blurring the background, put a Gaussian blur there, and you're good. With traditional art, you have to be a little bit more careful. So I actually put off blurring the background for a while and decided to do this wall. So this wall, I also regretted it like the instant I was done with it. Um, it was so bright, it was so yellow, it didn't look like it didn't fit in with everything else uh, which actually in turn kind of works in a way because not that I'm doing the background so I'm putting details on it and one way for me to make sure that the background doesn't grab too much attention was to just use the same tone of blue with what I did for the wall so it looks you know it has enough detail but it's not trying to grab everything and I guess when I do more colorful works that's something I can try out or something I can keep in mind um, but right now since the yellow wall is so yellow it does grab the attention and brings it down to the character instead I guess framing wise for the entire drawing it could have been better as well um, if I included a bit more of like his you know thighs maybe or his legs it would have been much more easier to frame things, but that's where I ended up. So at this point, I was worried about the yellow wall. I was thinking about how to integrate it. So what I do, and you'll see that later eventually, is that, well, step one is to put like shadows on it. Uh, step two was to put a blue wash on top of it. And that blue wash would make it look, you know, bluer. It would integrate it with the rest of the piece. So it's still a bright yellow wall it's just not just yellow it has blue on it now so that way it's not just sticking out like a sore thumb and to sort of tie that in with everything else in the piece that like sidewalk thing there on the bottom I also put like a yellowish tint to it or I guess I guess a yellow wash to it just so that the brick yellow brick wall isn't the only thing that's yellow in it
So all in all, I did enjoy working on this piece. It was a nice way to just let out that creative high I was having. Um, I actually still have it until now. I still want to create something. But, you know, it's not as... I don't feel as jittery to do something. Um, there was a lot of moments of uncertainty during this piece, like between sticking to just pure monotone, to adding that yellow wall, to, you know, to, to that background, maybe not like, trying to make it not steal attention from the character. But in the end, it all turned out. I mean, there are some things you can improve, like the perspective, the background, the framing. Those are things that, you know, things improve for next time. But it was fun. I enjoyed working on this piece. Uh, generally, I think this was one of those pieces where it's like you just have to trust yourself and you kind of know what you're doing. Especially since I, I've drawn quite a bit, or I've drawn a lot. Whether the quality of them are good, are good or not is questionable. But I've drawn a lot and I know techniques and even if I don't actively remember them, they're somewhere in my brain. So it's one of those trust yourself and trust trust the process kind of things and it'll kind of turn out. But, but yeah, this is fun. So if you did enjoy watching, oh wait, before we actually go, I am using for the paints, uh, the Reeves watercolor tube paints. I believe these are their student line. Um, I've had them for five, six years and I still haven't used them all up even though I use so much blue. Um, I also use the Kura Tahigan Saitambi, but that was just for like some white highlights. I also eventually used the Zig uh, watercolor pearlescent jewel set. And yeah, just those. The papers, just like this Kansen paper that I bought back in college. I still do not know if it's any part of any brand line. It's just Kansen paper. And yeah, that's all that I used. So. Okay, let's actually go to the outro now. If you like it, if you like this video, please consider do liking the video itself. If you want to see more stuff like this, maybe you can subscribe. I do traditional art like watercolor, uh, card pencils. I do digital art every now and then when I can. I also do character designing, fan art, you know, typical stuff like that. So if you want to see more, do subscribe. And if you want to see the final piece and I guess whips every now and then when I remember. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or DeviantArt, and I will see you around. Also, stay safe. <laughs>